There are many different types of eye shapes and sizes, each of them having their own different appeal. I don't think any one is way more attractive than the other, but undoubtedly the most popular eye shape right now is hunter eyes, for men at least. Reason being because they kind of have a serious, mysterious look, and psychologically it's been proven that they give the illusion of more trustworthiness and better leadership skills. So. Who wouldn't want hunter eyes, right? And a couple guys you can look at that have hunter eyes are the number one highest paid male model, Sean O'Pry, and also the celebrity who has scientifically the most attractive face, and that is Robert Pattinson. They both have hunter eyes. So what makes hunter eyes different from prey eyes? Well, hunter eyes, you know, just like the word says, you look like more of a predator, like you are the one making things happen in control of the situation. Whereas prey eyes, you are in retreat. You are hiding from the aggressor, the predator, right? It's kind of the surprise scare look, supposedly. So what genetically creates hunter eyes? Well, hunter eyes is decided by a couple factors. One is more compact square eye orbital bones. This is this bone that is around your eye. If it is more deeper set, square, compact eye orbital bones create hunter eyes. And of course, the biggest indication of hunter eyes is you have that thin layer of skin that folds over your eye, giving it that sleek, wider, more rectangular, fierce look. Whereas prey eyes don't have that skin fold over and they have more eyelid exposure because the skin is being pulled tight. And this is created by bigger, rounder, more shallow eye orbitals. The other second big factor that decides your eye shape is your maxilla. That is the bone that is right here in your mid face. So if you have flatter, more underdeveloped maxilla, then you have less support underneath and around your eyes. This is how people get the, that consistent eye bag look and they look like they're always tired even when they wake up from a full night's sleep. So somebody like Pete Davidson is an example of that, where if you have a more forward developed maxilla, then you're going to have more support under and around your eyes, giving you more of that hunter eye look. And also hunter eyes usually have positive cantle tilt. That means your eyes tilting down inwards a little bit, kind of like, you know, a predator would be. <laughs> now, I, I actually fall somewhere in between. Like, if I relax my eyebrows, then I can achieve that hunter eye look. But most of the time, I'm, I do have a fold, but it usually doesn't fold all the way down into my eye, or sometimes I even have one folding into my eye and the other one, I actually have a little bit of eyelid exposure. So I'm like somewhere right in between, but when I really squint and like relax my eyebrows, I can achieve hooded eyes. And also I am in the minority. I kind of actually have a little bit of negative canthal tilt eyes where it tilts a little bit down on the outsides. So I think I'm a little bit of an outlier, but here's some things you can and can't do if you want to achieve hunter eyes. First thing, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about bone smashing. And what this is, is people using some sort of hard object to try to make micro damages to their eye bones in the hopes that it calcifies and grows back bigger, better bone structure. This is something called Wolf's Law, where if you make micro damages to the bone, they will callous and grow back thicker and stronger. So I've seen videos out there, people trying to achieve this, taking rocks and hammers to their face. I don't recommend this whatsoever. Is having hunter eyes really worth possibly damaging your eye, going blind or breaking bones in your face? I don't recommend it. Next, you can't change your genetics. Everybody has different genetics. We all have ancestors that came from different places all over the world. So you can't change your genetic blueprint. So just keep that in mind. You are gonna be somewhat limited to the changes you can make to your face. So what can you do? Well, one thing that you can do if you're under the age of 25 is you can start mewing. Remember how we talked about the maxilla and how it's important to have forward growth to support your under and side eye? Well, mewing is this practice that was created by the British orthodontist Mike Mew, and the theory is simple. A lot of people, starting from a young age, have a relaxed facial posture. They breathe through their nose, and they don't have forward pressure of their tongue up against the roof of their mouth, creating better facial structure. They're kind of relaxed, they're breathing through their nose, and their tongue is not engaged, so they get this kind of like sloped, soft, melted look to their their face and in return you get this flatter and sometimes negative growth maxilla. So to illustrate it, let me introduce you to my friend Chomper here. Hopefully that is in focus. But yeah, it's very simple. You want to have your tongue pressed up against the roof of your mouth 
at all times. And this will apply constant pressure up against your maxilla, forcing it to grow forward and upward, giving you better facial structure and better orbital support. Now, it seems kind of crazy at first. I know I get it, but myself and a lot of other people have redeemed incredible results by starting this from a young age. Now, it's important to start it as young as you can because the older you get, the more these fissures in your face solidify, and it's not as likely that you'll be able to change your face structure. And while we're on the topic of mewing, it can also help you achieve a better jawline and jaw. And one of the other elements of that is actually building this masseter muscle right here. And one of the best ways of doing that is just chewing gum and chewing a lot of it. And I actually just released this product. It is my own gum that is 10 to 15 times harder than normal chewing gum. So click the link down below and check it out. I'm super proud of this product. It's like a workout, but for your jawline. So it'll get your jaw muscles popping, give you a better jawline, better facial structure. Next thing that you can do to achieve hunter eyes is very simple, very easy, and that's just to practice consistently relaxed facial expressions. Instead of walking around with your eyebrows raised like this, just walk around, have your eyebrows kind of push down a little bit. Maybe not be mean mugging everybody, but kind of just let them chill. What this is gonna do is simply relax your eyebrow muscle and let the skin compress and relax so that it can actually have the chance to fold over onto your eye if you actually have the skin available for that. For people who have too much eyelid exposure, you might not see much change. But me, I can do it pretty easily if I just relax, squint just a little bit and try to practice as often as I can. One other thing that I've seen people practice, they call eyelid pulling. The theory is simple. If you take your fingers and just tug slightly on your eyelids, it can help stretch out this eyelid skin right here, basically increasing the elasticity of your eyelids so that there's excess eyelid available to fold over your eye, giving you that hooded eye look. Now, I'm going to be honest, I haven't tried this. I haven't done really any research on it. So if you're going to attempt this, use caution. And I'm not promoting this in any way, shape or form, but it does sort of make sense that it could be possible. So viewer discretion. Now, the one last option that is available is plastic surgery. Now, as far as I know, I don't think there is a hooded eye surgery. There are reverse hooded eye. Believe it or not, a lot of people want to get rid of their hooded eye and just have that more almond eye shape. So there is actually almond eye surgery, which could definitely be useful if you have a lot of eyelid exposure to help decrease that and give you that single small fold eyelid look. And the one other potential surgery is brow ridge filler. This is where if you have a very flat eyebrow ridge, they can actually put some filler in there to give, give you the appearance of a more prominent eyebrow ridge. And this could potentially pull that skin a little bit forward, giving you a better eyelid appearance. But I really think the best options are just to practice mewing, focus on relaxing your facial expression, maybe just a couple times a day, do a little exercise, try pushing your eyebrows down. You could probably train them to uh, relax more often, just like you can train to raise one eyebrow. I used to not be able to do this. This took a bit of training. You could also train it to have a more relaxed expression usually. So that's it, guys. I hope I had some more answers for you. I'm not promising any incredible results, but some of these are worth a try. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, subscribe and until next time. Peace.